Welcome to 7 Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. Time for another hot sauce tasting. Today I've wheeled the table back into the front yard, although after the great hot pepper pot migration, space is noticeably tighter than when I did this a few weeks ago. I'm going to taste three hot sauces made right here in the Twin Cities. Lost Capital Foods is based out of Falcon Heights, Minnesota, a small suburb just north of St. Paul. Falcon Heights is also home to the Minnesota State Fair, which would be starting in two weeks, but unfortunately had to be canceled for 2020 due to the pandemic. So we won't be able to enter our peppers in the vegetable competition this year, but I digress. Lost Capital sauces are unique in a number of ways. One, they're made with local ingredients, including peppers grown locally. Two, they're raw. The ingredients in these sauces are fermented, then blended. That's it, no cooking. Three, they're probiotic and must be kept refrigerated. The bottle recommends you consume them within eight months of the bottled on date found on every bottle. So these are hot sauces that can possibly help keep you regular. And not just because they're hot. That's definitely a unique approach. Co-founder DJ calls himself a Zymergist. I had to Google that to discover it means someone who studies the chemical process of fermentation in brewing and distilling. I'm very intrigued and I hope you are too. I know you can't taste these through the screen, but I'll do my best to describe the flavors. These sauces have a five flame rating system, so we'll try them in order. Three, four, and five flames. I'm expecting rich, complex flavors, but not extreme heat. But there's only one way to find out. Let's get started. I'm going to start with another bad investment, a Manzano chili sauce, rated three flames out of five. As someone who formerly worked as a graphic designer, I have to say that the design of these labels is top notch, with really eye-catching illustrations and typography. Here are the ingredients. Manzano chilies, water, red jalapeno, vinegar, habanero, onion, arbol, kosher salt, honey, guayillo, ancho, ghost chili, and garlic. Manzano is a ricotto, which many of you know is one of my very favorites. As always, I'll taste these sauces on pale, bland, Carr's table water biscuits. As you know if you've watched my previous reviews, I'm not the most articulate hot sauce and pepper critic out there, but I'll try because these unique sauces deserve more than my usual, wow, and that's delicious. Mm. With all those different peppers in there, you know it's going to be pepper forward. I really like this. I'm going to try another one here so I can get the full effect, which I guess I'm going to now because I put half the bottle on this cracker. The honey and garlic enhance the flavors of the, of the peppers. This is very unique and now after having eaten quite a bit, I can, I'm getting a little bit of burn in the back of my throat. This is very tasty and I think it would be perfect for people who enjoy a little spice but and love the taste of, of fermented sauce but don't want extreme heat, aren't crazy like I am. I really like this and I'm excited to climb up the flame scale to the four flame and see how that is. Let's move on. Next up, we have the Pyramid Scheme smoked chili sauce with lime, two of my favorite things. So let's see what our ingredients are. Lime juice, water, red jalapeno, vinegar, chipotle, garlic, ghost chili, arbol, and kosher salt. So I expect this to be pretty citrus forward with lime juice as the first ingredient.
pour some out. I love anything that has a smoky flavor to it. Add the lime, just that little bit of ghost chili to give it more of a kick. DJ really is a master of fermentation. I just love all the rich, complex flavors he brings out of these peppers. Wow, I think this would be great on pizza, Mexican food, pasta, eggs. I eat hot sauce on everything, so of course I would put it on everything. This is a, a big hit in my book, and now I'm really anxious to get to the five flame and see if it can make me sweat. Before I sample the third bottle, here's a clip I shot about 2.30 a.m. Monday morning during a torrential thunderstorm. Unfortunately, I was shooting through the glass of the storm door, so most of this is not in good focus. But maybe you can see the pea-sized hail and how hard the rain was falling. Other locations in the area got hail as large as baseballs, and hot sauce producer Crybaby Craig's lost about 40% of their pepper crop, 15,000 pounds of habaneros. I feel terrible for them, but glad we only had a few pods knocked off our plants. Here's our most recent harvest. Peak picking season will be in two or three weeks. Finally, I'll try Death, Death Tax, Tax, a blood orange scorpion sauce rated at five flames out of five. It's got, it's got the two X's on there for the eyes. Let's see what the ingredients are. Okay, we got vinegar, Trinidad scorpion, blood orange juice, onion, guayillo, lemon juice, garlic, and kosher salt. Sounds like a witting set of ingredients to me. Ooh, scorpion and blood orange. Whoa. Okay, we've got what I would normally call a healthy dollop on here. So let's see what happens. Hmm. With the scorpion, this is definitely hotter than the other sauces, but overall I would say these sauces are for people who love complex flavors that blend well with food. Whoa, that's rich. Yeah, the scorpion and blood orange is definitely a winning combination. This would be pretty hot for a, a lot of people, and it's going to be tasty to virtually, you know, 100% of the people that try this. These sauces are so rich. I know that DJ has uh, a history as a brewer and it shows, you know, uh, it, he really knows how to blend complex flavors together and uh, make something that really tantalizes the taste buds and would complement almost any food that you want to pour this on. So I would say pour it on. As usual, Kat is behind the camera and I've been watching her face and I know she's anxious to try these sauces. I'm sure we'll be trying them with dinner tonight. If you don't live in the Twin Cities area, you can purchase these online at lostcapitalfoods.com. I'll include a link in the video description. Just one more thing. As I said earlier, I love ricottos. This mini ricotto red plant was started last season and overwintered indoors. It produced a few peppers last year, but none of them ripened before frost, and I had to harvest them green when I cut back the plant after repotting. But now I finally have the first ripe pod, the only pepper the plant has produced so far this year. So I thought it deserved to be tasted on camera, and that's what I'm gonna do. Here we go. Mmm. Just like the Ecuadorian red pepper for hell, it's very juicy, fairly uh, thick-walled. Of course, black seeds like 
most all the Rakotos have. Some have brownish seeds, but they're all dark like this that I've ever seen. And it's got a, a fair amount of heat. It's not as sweet as the pepper for hell, but maybe it's a little bit hotter. It's got a nice bite. I just wish that the plant produced more of them. I'm going to tear this open here so I can save these seeds. As I've said before, you know, Rakoto seeds are some of the only that I normally save because I grow everything so close together. And unless I practice some sort of isolation, which I haven't gotten around to again this year, I don't save the seeds. I uh, buy them mostly from Semias La Palma and sometimes rely on the kindness of my pepper friends from all around the world. I'm so glad I had a chance to share this pepper with you. It's amazingly good. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and tap the bell to receive a notification each time we post a new episode. Check out all our 7-Pot Club and Hot Pepper related merch at 7pot.club slash merch. We've got a bunch of fresh new styles and we're adding new designs almost daily. And for even more 7-Pot Club, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For 7-Pot Club, I'm Rob.